Hi guys, I haven't done a video in a relatively long time, but I wanted to get on and talk about something that's kind of been going on lately. So I have had something happen to me that has pretty much broken me hardcore. And I was contemplating doing a video about this quite a while ago, but I just really haven't been in the right place to talk about it. I will put out a warning that I am going to cry a lot in this video and I'm already crying and I'm not even talking about it. I had, um, where do I even start with this story? I have always dealt with um, depression my pretty much my entire life. Um, family issues, friend issues, you know, self-esteem issues, all that good stuff. And ever since I was little, I always owned a pet. And when I moved out of my parents' house um, in 2007, I moved into my first apartment and I knew I had to have a cat. I knew I had to have something um, because to me, it has always been some, a, a kind of an emotional support thing. And don't mind my dogs in the background, you'll hear them playing and whatnot. But I'm, this is me being raw, honest and no lights, no makeup, no backdrop. It's just me talking, so deal with it. So I got a cat from the Humane Society up in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Cedar Valley Humane Society. And I walked in with the intention of just getting like an older cat, somebody that could be lazy with me, all of that good stuff. Ended up finding this cute little itty bitty kitten, teeny, teeny, tiny. She ended up only being about four weeks old. I just fell in love with her big bug eyes and she was a calico and I am madly in love with calicos. I always have been. I've always been obsessed with calico kittens. So I just knew I had to have her. However, she was only four weeks old and she did have to be bottle fed. And I told the Humane Society that I can do that. I grew up on a farm. You know, I've bottle fed kittens a bunch of times, a handful of times, as long as you let me have her because I don't want her to be put down because they said they didn't really have time to bottle feed kittens right now. They said that she was brought in, um, someone found her in a box and she was the only one living. So they found her on the in a box on the side of the road and out of all the kittens in there, I don't know how many, she was actually the only one living. Um, so I took her and her, she had an original name, but it never stuck. So her name was Kitty. Her name was Kitty. And, um, oh God, didn't think I was going to cry this fast, but she, um, she very fastly became my best friend. Um, those years after high school were very, very dark for me. Um, I was... I was trying to find myself. I was trying to figure out, you know, just adolescent years. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. I was trying to figure out my relationship. I was trying to figure out me. And, you know, I was dealing with a lot of bullying. And it was just a really, really, really dark time in my life. There were, um, although I never attempted it, there were a lot of times where I just thought the world would be better without me. And, uh, my saving grace was my cat. She went through a lot with me. She went through a lot of moves <laughs> with me. She um, lived in a lot of different places with me. Um, she was there when I cried. She was there when I laughed. She was there when I had some really hard decisions to make. And she was there to see happy moments, sad moments, dark moments. But I do truly believe that she is the reason that I'm still here because I didn't really have friends back then. And at least not friends that would cuddle up with me and purr me to sleep, you know, when I was crying my eyes out. So she very fastly became my best friend and um, she was my emotional support animal through my depression and my anxiety and all of the issues that I dealt with back then. She was there for me through really hard breakups um, when I moved to Milwaukee, you know, broke up with my then boyfriend at the time. That was a hard one. She moved with me to St. Louis. She was there with me when I lost a child. Um, she was there with me going through a divorce. Um, she was there with me when I was younger, dealing with family and friend issues. She was there and that's, that's just what it was. 
she has seen me cry more times than I can even begin to imagine counting. And as she grew up, every time I would even sniffle, you know, with a cold or anything, you'd hear her from the other room meow, like, are you okay, mom? And she'd come out of the woodwork and like come up to me. And it was kind of a running funny joke for a while that any anytime I was sick, like just sniffling, like a cold or allergies, she would always do that because she grew up knowing that I cried a lot. And um, it was hard. It was really hard. But huh. the past year, she, um, well, last year, um, 2018, she started getting some bad uh, urinary tract infections and antibiotics seemed to clear it up right away, but she kept getting them. And then she just got really, really picky on eating and we couldn't really figure out what was wrong, but she seemed so healthy. She still played. She was still crazy like always. And um, then I moved out of my ex-husband's house with her and uh, she was there you know, but her health just declined really, really fast. And we couldn't figure out what was wrong. So in May, she got another bad UTI and I brought her in for more antibiotics. The antibiotics didn't help this time. So in June, we brought her in one more time and she was at this point losing a lot of weight because she wasn't eating. And they said, we're gonna go one final route and we're gonna test, we're gonna have her go under um, radiation and do some, or not radiation, I'm sorry. We're gonna have her do an ultrasound and see what really is going on inside because every, we ruled everything else out. We don't know what it is. So I brought her in for um, an ultrasound and the news that I got back was um, really hard. She had cancer. It was a tumor growing in her bladder, if I remember correctly, but the cancer spread to every organ of her body. And it was far too late to do any kind of chemo, any kind of radiation, any kind of anything. It was too late. It was spread too far. So I asked the vet how long she had. And she told me she only had weeks to live. And I just never felt, I never felt so sad in my life that I couldn't do something to help. Here is this creature who helped me all my life and now I can't help her. And it just completely broke me. It completely broke me. And so I was in denial for a little while after that, although I knew that she only had a couple weeks to live. I just, it was like I couldn't I couldn't even imagine that was real. You know, she's an indoor cat. She should be invincible. She was only 12 years old. She should be living for at least another 10 years, you know? I just, in my head, I just always had this running joke that my cat's gonna live until 30 because she's an indoor cat, she's healthy, she's invincible, she's gonna live forever. Never did I ever think that she would pass away this early in life. So a week went by and I really started thinking like, this is the end. So I don't know what made me take a photo of my cat and I like three months prior to this, but I took this photo. And it has been one of those photos that I just feel like I've waited 12 years to see this photo happen because my cat Although she loved me, she didn't love anybody. You know, she didn't really love to be held. She knew who her mama was and that's the only person she ever, ever, ever cuddled with, ever loved anything. But I finally took this photo and I remember looking at the picture just thinking, oh my God, I've been waiting 12 years to get this good of a photo with her and I need to cherish this. So 
at about that week mark after she had been diagnosed, I went ahead and blew the picture up to a really big picture. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, and it came in the mail one day and I was really scared to open it. At first I kept thinking to myself, I'm not gonna open it until the time comes where she does pass away. But for some reason I told myself, I just, I have to open it. It's too pretty not to. And I hung it on my wall. That night after hanging it on my wall, something in me just told me that, Megan, this is happening and this is real. And me being an empath, I just can sense weird things. So I went into the room that my cat stayed in the majority of the end of her life. And I kind of called it the kitty hospice room, but it's my son room. And I had all her food in there, her litter box in there, her toys, her cat condo, everything. Not that she could jump up in it anymore, but um, I went in there and I sat her in her bed and I just... I talked to her. <laughs> and I cried with her. And I know it sounds so silly for people who just aren't animal people, but I cried with her for probably over an hour. <laughs> my boyfriend called, or my boyfriend texted me and said, you know, I'm home if you want to come over. And I said, okay, I'll be right over. But it ended up being like an hour and a half later that I finally made it over to his house because I was talking to my cat and I just sat her down and I remember in the movie Marley and Me sat the dog down and said like you need to tell me when you're ready to go and I for some reason I've always thought of that scene because it's it's a meaningful scene and watching that movie every time in in the past I just always thought you know like I need to know when my animals are ready so I sat her down and I just kept telling her that it's okay if you have to go because <laughs> because I've made peace with it and I looked at her and she kept looking me in the eye with her beautiful green eyes and just kept slowly blinking like she understood everything I was saying. You guys, I hadn't heard this cat purr in probably five months and she was purring. <laughs> And one of the things I'll always remember when she was little, the day I brought her home, I didn't have a cat carrier. I lied to the Humane Society saying it was in my car, but I didn't have one. So I sat her on my lap all the way home and all she did was need. And when I was talking to her that night, she just started needing. And it just reminded me of all of this, all of our life with her. So I sat her down and I told her, it's okay if you have to go. And if it's not okay with you, I need a sign from you telling me it's okay to let you go. <laughs> because I didn't want to make that decision alone. I didn't want to make the decision to put her down if I didn't quite have to. <laughs> but I needed her to know. And again, I know this is weird if you're not an animal person. <laughs> I needed her to know that it was okay for her to go because I was okay now. <laughs> All these years of my depression and my dark, dark past and being hurt by men, being abused, it's, I'm okay now. And I kept telling her, you know, I'm with someone and I'm okay now, you don't have to stay anymore. Because I truly believe that this cat was put on this earth to help me. <laughs> and I just, I told her, it's okay. It's okay, you don't have to stay anymore. Your mama's okay now. <laughs> I don't need you anymore. <laughs> and she just kept purring. And she just kept looking at me and I told her, Kitty, you were the best thing that ever happened to me and you saved my life so many times. So even though I truly saved your life, you saved mine. And I needed her to know that. I needed her to know. And I just, I kept repeating that I'm okay now. Your mama's okay. You know, you don't, I don't, I don't need your emotional support anymore. It's okay if you have to let go. And this conversation lasted for a good hour. And then I kissed her. I told her I loved her. And I left and went over to my boyfriend's house. 
And I know a lot of you are gonna judge me for leaving that night. The reason I did was because I knew it was gonna happen. I knew that was my last night with her and I debated, I went back and forth, do I stay? Do I lay with her one more night like we used to cuddle? Do I do that one more time? But I ended up going to his house because I knew if I stayed and something went wrong, I would have stopped it. I would have, you know, <laughs> woke her up and said, don't go, I would have been a mess. And if any of you know dogs and cats, when they do go to die, they typically will go away from their human. Like if you have an out outdoor dog or a cat, they will leave and die in peace. That way you don't have to see it type of thing. So I didn't want her to see me see her do that. So I went to my boyfriend's house, I took my dog and left. And I just, I was in a really weird mood all that night. I didn't tell my boyfriend why, cause I didn't wanna, you know, start a conversation. I didn't want him to say, you need to go over there. I didn't want any of that. I just wanted it to happen the way it was supposed to. That morning I woke up, I didn't really think anything of it, but I woke up, I took my dog and came home and I opened the door. And then immediately when I opened the door, I took a deep breath and said, whatever you see, it's okay. So I opened the door, I took a deep breath, and at first I thought, okay, I don't see her, she's probably in her room, she's probably okay. And then my eyes went to my photo that I have hanging on my wall. And right below that picture of us that I hung on my wall was Kitty. <laughs> final resting spot was right below that photo you guys this cat did not come out of her kitty hospice room for weeks and she walked all the way into the living room and passed away right in front of that photo If that's not fate, I don't know what is. It happened in the most beautiful way possible. That her final resting spot was literally right under this precious photo I had of her and me. And I always have known that animals have souls. I've always known that. And I go as far to believe that animals have deeper souls than humans. Whatever your beliefs are, that's fine. That's just my personal belief. But after that, after the talk I had with her and after seeing where she passed away, I have such a deeper, true belief that animals have souls so much deeper than we can ever imagine. <laughs> and although it was incredibly sad, and it's so incredibly hard still. I mean, we're now four months after she passed. I still cry every day. I look up at her ashes and just, I, I, I pet the cat that's up there. I just, I, I miss her. I miss her so much. I miss how crazy she used to be. I miss playing fetch with her. That was our thing. I miss her crazy calico attitude. I miss her temperament. I miss how she used to growl at everybody and be pissed at everything in the world other than me. I miss the way we used to spoon at night. I miss our cuddling sessions. I miss her. I miss seeing that beautiful cat. But it happened in a way that it should have. And it happened almost poetic I just I don't have words how it happened I just I can't even understand how it happened because it's such a deeper level than the way I even think like I think on such a deep level this is so much deeper it happened so perfect and it happened so beautifully it was almost like poetically written how it happened and my boyfriend I called my boyfriend at work and he came over, he, he was at work and came home. And I said, I can't be the one to put her in a box. I need you to help me. So he came over and he did it for me. And he told me I was sitting outside cause I couldn't watch. 
and he told me that she looked so peaceful the way that she had passed <laughs> and it just i i can't even begin to comprehend how this happened <laughs> like i said it's just it, it's like it was written you know <sighs> But she passed away after I gave her my blessing and after she knew that it was okay to leave her mama. And I truly don't think she would have left if she didn't know that I was okay. So, fast forward. <laughs> I kept talking to my dad over this. My dad is one of those very spiritual people who believe in animals and believe that when you see animals there's a symbolism behind it and when she passed you know he kept telling me if you're open to seeing signs from her you'll see them you know you just have to be open to seeing these signs she'll be with you she always will be with you so i had an open mind when it comes to this i believe in certain stuff like this as well but I truly had an open mind, but I said, you know what? I'm not ready to have another cat until I have a sign. <laughs> so we were down in Jamaica for my birthday, uh, me, my boyfriend, and some friends of mine. And I got like five phone calls from my dad, like the day before my birthday, uh, August 13th. My birthday is August 14th. <laughs> and he kept calling me and calling me and I thought something maybe was wrong. So eventually I called him back and he said, we got baby kitties. And I said, I've learned not to ask if there's any calicos anymore because there just never is calicos out there. Um, my dad owns a farm, lots of stray cats, lots of litters of kittens, lots of cats in general. But they all stemmed from when we first moved out there, there was a black cat. So we always get black kittens, black, white, gray kittens, like no color ever. So he said, we got baby kitties. And I was like, oh yeah. And then there was like this long pause. And he said, guess what color one is? instantaneous tears you guys instantaneous tears it was a calico and the day before my birthday and I just started bawling my eyes out because at first I was like this can't be a sign right this can't be but I told him I might want it I don't know yet though I was I guess waiting for another sign then the next day happened my birthday I woke up I was checking my notifications on my phone and I have a video doorbell um it's a ring doorbell. You can see, you know, who's at your door from your phone. I had a notification that there was uh, motion detected at my door. So I wanted to see if it was the mailman or what it was. There, I've only seen one stray cat in my neighborhood and it's never come up to my door. It's kind of just roaming around and it's like a gray tabby. On my ring doorbell, and I can show you guys the video if you need to. On my ring doorbell, there was a motion detected. On my birthday, there was a cat on my doorstep and it was a calico. <laughs> and I just thought, holy shit, <laughs> this is my sign. <laughs> so I called my dad and I told him and I said, I need that kitten. <laughs> and he said, I will make sure and take care of her for you until you can come get her. <laughs> So that was my sign and he sent me a picture of her at one point I just bawled my eyes out because she was so cute and now we have a little baby <laughs> so this is little baby Ivy <laughs> Oh, so hard. <laughs> this is little baby Ivy. She is about five weeks old. Well, no, she's about six weeks old. Sorry. This is little baby Ivy. She's about six weeks old. My little calico friend. <laughs> I named her Ivy um, for a couple reasons. I wanted a name that meant something. And... I was scrolling through names of cats trying to just come up with something and I was thinking maybe I could name her something to do with the stars since we were both born around the same time. We were both born under the same star. I was kind of thinking that in terms of that. And I scrolled across this name and 
the name was ivy and it said the meaning and you know ivy is an evergreen in the evergreen family and it's very dependent but it sticks around forever and if you think of an ivy plant that's exactly what it is it's dependent on something and it grows and it grows fast and it grows forever and ever amen and i was thinking oh what a good meaning and then i got to thinking outside of kitty's hospice room my sunroom um it was right around the beginning of summer and after she had passed this beautiful ivy plant just took over the outside of my house and i mean i'm like scared to cut it down it's literally taking over my house at this point but i'm scared to cut it down because it's beautiful and i just got to thinking ivy that should be her name so ivy is her name and although she'll never replace kitty i i do think that this is kitty reincarnated and i do think that even if that's not the case if she was not reincarnated if that's not what you believe in whatever all signs pointed to getting her and it's a healing process for me because although i miss kitty so much i have something that can help now so i just wanted to say to you guys that it's very difficult when you have a death of a pet but just know that even though they're not right there with you they're there with you and they always will be forever and that's what ivy's for because even if that's not kitty even if my beliefs are weird and crazy and not correct she's always going to be here and that's what an ivy plant represents so hug your animals very tightly Never go a day without hugging them and telling them you love them. Treasure that time you have with them because it doesn't last forever, unfortunately. And when that time does come, make sure that you talk to them. Make sure you talk to them and tell them stories. Tell them how you feel. Tell them how grateful you were to have them in your life. I promise you, you will forever be thankful for that time. Because if, had I not done that, I would have really, really hated it. But I came to peace with the situation and her illness. And I had a very peaceful night those last couple hours with her. And I'm so incredibly thankful for that. You guys, I'm so thankful. So do me a favor, hug your animals very tightly, tell them you love them and have a conversation with them they need to know how much they meant to you just as much as you know you mean to them so sorry i cry a lot thanks for watching <laughs> anyway i hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video all the pet lovers out there because i know a lot of you follow me that are pet lovers and read my story on ivy and everything and i really just wanted everybody to know that the backstory and I wanted everybody to know how much Kitty meant to me and how it's okay to move on and get something that won't replace her or him but can help in the healing process so thank you guys